So, ngayon, andito na tayo sa chapter 5 or sa module 7. So, pag-uusapan natin ngayon, first generation of computers or the vacuum tubes. So, recall lang, yung abacus, okay, siya yung calculating device na na-create dati. So, next is the analog calculators or is the slide rules. Ginawa siya ni John Napier. Then, the next is the digital calculators from the calculating clock to arithmometer. Dumaan din tayo sa time na naka ni Charles Babbage yung Babbage engine niya, yung dalawang engine, yung, yung difference engine, at yung hindi niya natapos or hindi niya nagawa na analytical engine. So yun, for information, si Charles Babbage pala, yung tinuring natin, the father of computing. So during the first generation of computers, so sinabi ko na nga, vacuum tube, okay, ito yung nag-revolutionize na mag-evolve yung technology ng tao from mechanical or electromechanical to completely electrical or electronic age. Ginawa to siya ng isang electrical engineer na si Lee D. Forrest. So, yun, pinakauna-unang general purpose computer, ano nga ba ulit? So, dito na-create yung INYAC, first high-speed general purpose computer, and the Colossus, okay? Sa World War II siya na-invento. Then, the next is the EDSAC and EDVAC, okay? Ito na yung kay Morris, yung sa team ni Eckhart, pati ni Mockley, and lastly, yung UNIVAC. So, ito yung pinakaunang computer na available commercially. Then, for the second generation of computers, sa module 8 nyo na. So, dito na invento natin yung transistors. The invention of the transistors drastically changed the computer's development. The transistors replaced the cumbersome vacuum tube in televisions, radios, and computers. As a result, the size of the electronic machinery has been shrinking ever since. So, nung unang pagka-invento ng transistors, dito na nag-start or na-feel ng tao na kada yung computer na nakaka-develop ng bago dito na nag-start na lumiit yung computer okay so from bulky size to medium size or not so large na mga size ng computer so dito na nag-start na naimbento ng tao so during the second generation din okay yung gamit na memory dito is the is magnetic pa rin okay magnetic core memory so parang sa concept pa rin ng kung naka-familiar kayo sa disk yung ginagamit natin na compact disc, VHS na mga tape. So, magnetically yun sila, tinatransform yung isang information at ini-store doon sa magnet. Okay? Kaya, able na ma-store yung isang information natin na pe-preserve by storing them to a magnetic core. Yun din yung gamit na memory dito sa transistor sa second generation ng mga computer. So, okay. Yung transistors din, mas reliable siya compared sa first generation. Then, yung main features ng second generation are, syempre, gumagamit siya ng transistors, smaller in sizes, generated less heat as compared to the first generation, and consumed less electricity as compared to the first generation computer. At, syempre, nagmamatter din yung speed, mas mabilis siya, faster than the first generation computers. So, after na discover ng tao yung transistors, so naka create pa sila ng isa pang another na device na magre-revolutionize or mas magpapabilis pa ng computer natin. So, ito yung mga integrated circuits. Ano nga ba yung integrated circuits? Ano yung kaibahan niya sa transistors? So, yung integrated circuits, ang nakadiscover nito or, or nakakuha ng idea is si Jack Kilby at si Robert Noyce. Okay? So, ano nga ba yung meron sa loob ng integrated circuits? So, nagko-contain lang yung integrated circuits Single integrated circuits contains many transistors. So, kaya kung iisipin natin, kung yung isang integrated circuits nagko-compose ng maraming transistors, so kung gagamitin natin yung integrated circuits as a processor sa computer, so mas malaki yung mai-improve niya. Kaya yun yung na naisip ng dalawang henyo during this time. Tinatawag din yung integrated circuits as chip or microchip. It is a semiconductor wafer on which a thousand or millions of tiny resistors, capacitors, and transistors are fabricated. So, an integrated circuits can be an amplifier, oscillator, timer, count, and computer memory or processor. So, yung pinakaunang integrated circuit computer is tinatawag na the System 360. So, ginawa din to siya ng IBM. So, one member of the family of IBM System 360 Model 50 Okay, nakaka-execute siya ng 500,000 additions per seconds. 
So main features during the third generation of computer. So syempre ginagamit nila is IC or yung integrated circuits. So more reliable in comparison to the previous generations. So much smaller in sizes, generated less heat, faster, lesser maintenance, costly, AC required, consumed lesser electricity, supported high level programming language. Computers of these generations were IBM 360 series, Honeywell 6000 series, PDP personal or personal data processor, IBM 370, TDC 316. So next generation is the fourth generation or the microprocessor. So nagdi-date siya okay from 1970 to 2010. Okay. So ano ba yung meron sa fourth generation? Syempre gumagamit na tayo dito ng mga microprocessors. So during this generation okay, dito natatag yung Intel Corporation yung nagde-develop ng mga microprocessors. So Intel 4004 was the first processor to be built on a single silicon chip. It contained 2,300 transistors built in 1971. It marked the beginning of the generation of computers whose line age would stretch to the current day. So yung mga ginagamit natin ngayon. So okay, ano nga ba yung microprocessors? So yung microprocessors, para to siyang chips, okay? Okay, yung processor chips, ginagamit as processor. And the memory chips, ginagamit din siya as memory or the random access memory or RAM. Or yun yung mga hinahanap natin na mga specs sa mga laptop natin, dapat malaki yung RAM, di ba? Isa rin yun siyang microprocessor or microchips. So yung advancement ng computer, parang din advancement ng, ng airline industry, okay? So same lang rin, kung gaano kabilis yung pag-travel ng tao, for example, from New York to Philippines, Ganon din kabilis pag-proceed or pag-invento ng mga mabibilis na mga computer. So, it is speeding up from bulky sizes of computers. Nakagawa sila ng sobrang liliit ng mga klase ng computer like laptop, tablet, smartphones through this microprocessor. So, on April 4, 1975, at that time when... Most Americans use typewriters. Childhood friends Bill Gates and Paul Allen found Microsoft, a company that makes computer software. Originally based in Al Quebec, New Mexico, Microsoft relocated to Washington State in 1979 and eventually grew into a major multinational technology corporation. In 1987, the year after Microsoft went public, 31-year-old Gates became the world's youngest billionaire. Sinacrifice pa ni Gates yung pag-aaral niya at si Allen, sinacrifice niya rin yung trabaho niya as a computer programmer para gawin yung Microsoft na nagde-develop ng mga software na ginagamit natin sa ngayon. Like yung Windows natin, created by Microsoft, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, at yung iba pang mga uh, softwares na sikat ngayon na kadalasan ginagamit sa buong mundo. And last generation is the fifth generation. So tinuturing na tayo ngayon from 2010 to the present as the fifth generation computers. Dinedevelop na kasi natin ngayon yung AI or artificial intelligence. Dinedevelop ng mga tao or ng mga scientist kung paano ititake yung computer or computing capability ng tao to the next level. So kaya ba yun? Robot overlords. Sentient computers. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Armageddon. This is what many people fear when artificial intelligence or AI comes to mind. I'm Martin Hitch and I'm the Chief Business Officer at Boston Over Robotics. I think AI is, is misunderstood. We have this expectation that it's going to take over. And the reality is we're, we're many, many, many years away from AI being sentient. Instead, what we are seeing today are devices like Amazon's Alexa, Google's Home, or Apple's Siri. These gadgets may sound sentient. It's 61 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly sunny skies. But really, they're far from it. Hi, I'm Robert Monroe, and I'm the CTO of Figure 8. The AIs that, that we're building are AIs that we can smartly interact with. So they're not optimized to be independently intelligent, um, they're optimized to, to be our guides, our, our assistants, uh, the extensions of our memory. Aside from consumer electronics, artificial intelligence's greatest promise may be in transforming entire industries. The underlying technology making this happen is known in the tech community as supervised learning. You have humans who are able to provide the, the training data 
uh, for algorithms to then automate a task. Uh, so for example, uh, a self-driving car uh, knows how to avoid a pedestrian, knows how to stay in the lane, because humans have sat down with images taken from the front of these cars and said, this is a human, this is the, the lane which marks the edge of the road. And it's these thousands and thousands of hours of human feedback uh, which ultimately uh, enables a self-driving car to be trained to, to automate this task. Google's Waymo is on the forefront of self-driving car technology and is using supervised learning to drive it forward. But in fact, transportation is just one area that is booming in the field of artificial intelligence. So that's all for the four computing periods and the five generations of computer. So the four basic computing periods, this is the timeline. How do we computers and compute? Five generation of computers, we discuss lang to about sa mga discovery natin, specifically sa computer. That's all. Thank you.